Do you want to save filament, cut your printing time in half, all while getting more beautiful prints? Well, who doesn't? In the following minutes I will show you advanced slicing tricks in Bamboo Studio on a print that I mass produced and sold in the past. This process is possible in every type of slicer. The settings may just be in different locations. But I highly recommend using Bamboo Studio or the similar Orca slicer. Let's get right into it. Here you can see one of my planter designs available to my reselling Patreons. To start we use a standard slicing profile from Bamboo Studio with three walls. So far so good. Let's have a closer look at the preview. We can see that the planter has a lot of unnecessary infill. The brim at the bottom is also not needed. If we activate the travel moves, you can see that the extruder head crosses the inner walls multiple times on every layer. This results in unclean inside walls, but is easily fixable. Next, we will take a look at the top surface pattern. The linear pattern does not fit the circular design of the planter and should be changed as well. Now some of you are probably thinking, why not just print it in vase mode? This is tempting due to the low printing time and cost. I did this a lot when I first started selling 3D printed designs. But vase mode prints often look like they are low quality, which results in unhappy customers and lots of returns. Returns are like sudden spaghetti prints, nobody likes them and they should be avoided at all costs. Let's get to the spicy part, changing relevant settings. First, we enable the advanced slicing mode. Next, we will disable Z-Hop. This setting has almost no benefits, increases stringing and wears your printer's Z-Rods down considerably. To get rid of the travel moves that cross the inner walls, we will enable avoid crossing walls. We can set the value for this print to 200 mm. Under the strength tab, we will set the infill to zero. We will get back to this later. Additionally, we will disable detect narrow internal solid infill and ensure vertical shell thickness. The bottom surface area of this print has no sharp corners and is large. The brim is entirely unnecessary and can be disabled. Let's slice the model again and have a quick look at the changes with the modified settings. The printing time has been reduced and if we take a look at the inside, all the infill is gone, like intended. But wait, how will the bottom layer be printed without infill? Everyone needs a little support sometimes. And this is where modifiers come to the rescue. Let's have a look at those handy helpers. To add a modifier, go to the Prepare tab and click on Objects. Select your STL file and right click to open the drop down menu. Click on Add Modifier and choose a basic shape like a cylinder. The first step is to move the generated cylinder in the middle of the planter, changing its coordinates or using the drag and drop system. Now we can select the modifier and resize it as we see fit. We want to generate infill right under the floating bottom layer of the inside shape. So our modifier should be around the same size as well. To change the modifier settings, select the cylinder on the left. We will set the infill to 30. The infill type can be selected as well. The sparse infill pattern grid works just fine, but you can choose whatever you like. Let's repeat the whole process with a modifier for the top of the planter. Click on the planter STL, add modifier and choose another cylinder. Like before, we take the little guy and first move him to the center of the planter. But this time, we also drag him to the top of the geometry. So far, so good. Let's resize him like we did earlier. Again, you don't have to be too accurate with it. To only catch the last few layers, we will move the cylinder up. Just like that. Next up, are the setting changes for this modifier. Select the modifier on the left and this time set the infill to 40. Like we said in the beginning, the top surface looks much better with a concentric pattern. Now we just have to select a fitting support pattern, like support cubic or lightning. 
You can play around with the patterns and see what works best for your specific model. Time to slice again and have a look at the changes. The top layers now have a supporting infill pattern, which leads to a clean top surface in the concentric pattern. The infill between the walls on the rest of the planter is gone just like we wanted. Remember, the infill only increases the part strength slightly. Walls and outer shape are a lot more important. Having the walls connect at some point already leads to a strong print. At the bottom we can see the new support structure of the first modifier which will lead to a clean inside bottom layer, the planter. Now this is already a great improvement. We reduced the printing time by more than 3 hours and saved lots of filament. But I still have a trick to further reduce the printing time that gets overlooked by a lot of people. Let's do some final changes to the line width in the global settings. Go over to quality and set all line widths to 0.5 mm. In return we will reduce the wall count by 1. This way the overall wall thickness will stay nearly the same while reducing the print time significantly. Changing the line width up to 0.6 mm with a 0.4 mm nozzle makes almost no difference in print quality and works great for models without small details. Don't forget to reduce your wall count by 1. To still get that extra clean top surface layer, we will go to the top modifier and reduce the line width to around 0.35 mm. Well, let's have a look at the final results. Our planter has infill only where it's truly needed and a sturdy structure due to the thick walls. But now to the spicy part. We reduced our cost by 30% and cut our printing time in half. Pretty awesome if you ask me. Now we can finally make up for all those unexpected spaghetti prints of the past. I would recommend saving these settings as a 3MF file. For more content like this, smack that like button or subscribe to my channel. A big thank you to all my Patreons, thanks members and supporters on other platforms who enable me to make educational and hopefully enjoyable content like this.